until recent epochs, was unfair to call man a rational animal. He could not be called rational because he constantly invented, by his whim and often spontaneously, religious, ethical behaviours, aesthetic norms, moralisms and philosophical meditations, all of which relied on non-rational criteria. To even suggest that rationality should have played a dominant part in these things was an unmentioned absurdity. Where is man today? Today, man is shackled inside a cage of his own making. There is no lock, and the chains exist only in his own head. Man is limited only to rationality, inventing practical rules for practical purposes that ultimately serve nothing but his own innate animality. This rationality has consisted of prolonging life, avoiding pain, and satisfying appetites for both hunger and sexual lust. Individually, these things are not unambiguously good or bad, but together they explain the dull and declinatory nature of Western discourse for the past 300 years. Rationality stands out as a particularly dangerous thing to be enamoured of, because it first tricks the individual who worships it, then the others who worship him. Worship is really the correct term here, because as many others have already observed, rationality, when placed at the top of any hierarchy, becomes a pantheon unto itself. The necessary and stabilising forces of irrational religion and belief have faded away, and only the chaos of empiricism remains. When rationality becomes the crown of all considerations, society will begin to decline. Like anything, I do not believe rational thought or action should be cast out of society, but rather put back in its proper place. Like the bourgeois thinkers that populate its academies, rationalism is a necessary, respectable and useful aspect of humanity when it serves its proper purpose, and does not grow like a tumour to an unhealthy degree. Like everything the bourgeoisie comes into contact with, the respectable force of rationality became rationalism just as liberty became liberalism and trade became capitalism. The weapon of the middle class is ideology and dogma. We must also consider the fact that what is rational is humorously fluid. Like the natural and the legitimate, the rational is really nothing more than what is customary at any one time or in one culture. In a political sense, the most enduring systems are the ones that transcend rationality. Think of the diminished but still stable English monarchy, which to a purely rational man should have been abolished centuries ago. Look at the American Constitution, which, although far too democratic for my tastes, has survived, because forces which would alter it on rational whims have been unable to do so. The consistent irrationalities of the United States Constitution are defended, because the document has become a beloved, semi-mystical, traditional aspect of the American plebeian class, just like the British monarchy has in its own country. Simply put, man is a broadly irrational animal who has shackled himself in a rational cage. I conclude that this regime will only end when the rule of the bourgeoisie ends. A rational aristocrat is a contradiction in terms, and even the most junior student of history knows that the masses are upliftingly irrational.